Welcome back everyone to yet another episode where we are going to talk about a much requested brand which is Vas Budapest. Coming up! I hope you're all well. Welcome to an actual episode after last week's fiasco. And we are going to talk about, as I said, a very much requested brand from all of you. And this is Vas Budapest. And it's a brand from Hungary, if you can't guess by the name. And it's one of the most famous brands when it comes to, you know, shoe aficionados uh, for quality and value for what you get, because these are genuinely handmade shoes. Uh, for those of you that don't know much about it, uh, VAS, which actually, apparently, it's pronounced something like VOSH, uh, with a much deeper H, H at, the, at the end, and I think it means iron, so correct me if I'm wrong. It's a, it's a quite an old brand, maybe not as much as, you know, the brands you see from uh, the UK, etc. The brand was formally established around 1978, if I remember right, from Lash Le Vosch. And, you know, it has grown up so much since that. But many people might not know that shoemaking runs in the family history for a long time before that. But due to the fact that it was, you know, socialism and all the Soviet Union stuff, it was impossible to open up their own store. But the first real workshop started in 1978 and it has been thriving until now, which is great to see. There are people that travel, you know, all around the world just to visit Budapest and then just get a great pair of shoes from, from, from Vosch. Um, I like them very much and never had the real opportunity to try them until now, so I'm very excited with what I have on my hands and I'm equally excited to bring that to you. So, what do we go here as a basis? Uh, I have a made to order, and it's an austerity brogue with uh, lasted shoe trees, metal toe tips, and of course, like I said, the austerity brogue design, and it's on the U last, which we're going to talk about as well. And stay tuned, since this is not exactly a review pair, because I paid for it, um, I did get it for a better price, and you will see at the end as well that there are a lot of opportunities during sales. So, we're going to do a nice uh, close-up. We're going to talk about, you know, the leather, how the shoe feels, uh, and we're going to end up talking about sizing, value, availability, and all the good stuff we usually do. So, let's get started. I'm really excited about this. All right, it's time to do the close-up. So first of all, we begin with the box, which has a very nice sort of like light cherry burgundy sort of color uh, it's quite sturdy i would say uh, no you know not as sturdy as but it's it's quite solid and of course at the front here at the top you can see you know the branding and everything but that's about it there is nothing else you know telling you know showing what you get uh, which honestly i don't really care about that let's open it up uh, here we have some branded tissue paper, which actually is, is quite high quality. Uh, it's, it's not very thin, it's branded, and it's quite nice. Inside, well, you get your shoes, which are wrapped into this, you know, sort of foamy, uh, thicker paper, both of them. It, it is a little bit of an overkill, but honestly, it ensures that my shoes arrive perfectly fine and as scathed. As you can see, it's quite a lot. And that's about it. Uh, no extra little thingies or unnecessary details, which I'm perfectly fine with. The shoebox themselves, as you can see here, they have this sort of like off-white cream, it's almost a bit of, uh, you know, a yellow color, and it has a bit of uh, texture, uh, but at the same time, you can see the weave, they work really well. Uh, they are quite, they're, they're big enough for the shoes, as you can see. And they work very well for storage. And that's about it. Moving on. 
The star of the show is here. You've already seen them, you know, uh, at the beginning of the video, but now we're gonna talk really about them. Let's put this to the side and talk about the shoe itself. First of all, you know that this is an austerity brogue, so it does mimic what you say the design of a wingtip. You can see here and you can see here, you know, the, the wing, as we say. But in reality, it's not a brogue. There is no, there are no perforations, so it's more cosmetic. And this is more why I like the austerity brogue design because it's very versatile. Uh, it can be dressed up and down without thinking about it. And honestly, the details they are much more discreet. I actually think that this is one of the most versatile Oxfords alongside the Adelaide that you can have. Perfect, and. Of course, you know, five eyelets at the top, uh, a really nice design and proportions when it comes to the facing and all the detail, the spacing between uh, the laces, the placement as well of the wingtip uh, design, which is, I think it's perfect, especially for a more narrow type of toe shape, which is the U-last, as we will talk about. And that's about it. A uh, small difference at the back that you can see that uh, sort of like the, the back seam is not a dog tail or just a straight up, uh, but instead it's forming these two uh, pieces back here at the quarters. Overall, it's a very nice, very elegant shoe. And it looks very well built as well. Uh, of course, this is the U last, like I said and it's a really nice soft square. It's one of the most, you know, elegant and sharp last that uh, Vash has. And I think only the K last is one that looks very similar, but is a little bit wider. Oh, on the bottom, we have some very interesting detail as well. So these are JR soles, which are, you know, some of the best you can get. And I also asked for a metal toe tip installation, which was pretty well done. Uh, it is a bit rough around the edges, but honestly, it's perfect. What I noticed when I first touched them, and it's like the, the sh not the shape, sorry, the the texture of the sole is a bit more rigid. It's not so polished and smooth, which I think is actually great because it must be much easier to work with grip on such a sole, at least for the beginning. You know, when you get first soles and they are like so slippery. And a really nice heel block here as well with a rubber patch and a lot of nails here for structure. Overall, they did a great job, uh, especially for a Hansun sole. You can see the, you know, the remnants of the, of the channeling, which is very impressive. You think about that it's uh, Hansun. Uh, also, there is no real, there is no fiddleback, but the waist itself, I mean, it's rather, it's rather tight. It's nice and bevel, and it gives a really nice shape, as you can see for the shoe. Great. So leather itself, of course, as we said, very difficult to gauge the, you know, the quality of the leather and the height before you actually put it into into use, and not just one or two, three times. Uh, however, it is it is quite smooth. The front here, the front part here, feels very, very structured and a bit rigid. And it gets a little softer around, you know, the sides, which is very interesting. Uh, I like how the shape, well, not the shape, but the proportions of the tongue, it's, I think it fits perfect, the shoe. Sometimes you see it a bit more, sometimes you see it a bit less. I think it looks pretty good, huh? Very nice. Stitching, I mean, what would you expect as for these prices? I mean, it's quite good. I don't see any defects. I don't see any problems. Uh, the you can see probably uh, how it is it works with uh, you know the the weld here and the stitching of the weld. Uh, on the back side, you can see also. I forgot to mention that it's a little more. Uh, you I don't think you would say sloppy but a bit more natural. Uh, in many ways, I've come to terms and realized that this is a part of having it, you know, like handmade and not extremely, amazingly smooth and polished, uh, which is, a, you know, it's a, it's a handmade shoe. It does have some uh, 
some charm to it, which some people actually call the vast charm. It's very interesting. Uh, if you look at here, I can show you, uh, at the the edge of the and the beginning of the hill block, it's quite it's quite rough. It's a bit like sandpaper, and uh, it's quite interesting. It doesn't make any difference, but it's quite cool to see that you know all the handmade details of the shoe. Now that I removed the shoe trees, which came with the shoes, uh, there is this intoxicating smell of the leather, which is. <laughs> Very, very interesting, and must look like a lunatic if anyone sees me doing that and smelling them. Uh, when I look at the inside, um, it's very hard to just show you here, but uh, while the trimming, well, the actual lining uh, is is perfect, it, it is a little bit rougher around the edges, not that anyone would care. And there is no suede feel or texture at the back. So I didn't get any heel slip, as you will see, so it's great. Uh, I think it works really well. And there are a few, you know, handwritten stuff here. And as a sole, uh, you get the, you know, the, the Vash branded logo. And it is actually a full sole, so it's not half, which is, you know, still quite impressive. And overall, the finishing is great. Now that I took these off, which are substantial, the shoe is... It's actually not so heavy. It's it's just the right you know it's just the right weight, but it does feel substantial when when you hold it. it feels that you know what I'm I'm holding a shoe, I'm holding something strong and sturdy. It's quite interesting feeling and difficult to convey you know into words. Very interesting. So good leather, good stitching. Uh, I mean the laces you know there are a bit threads here and there. Uh, they have this, this type of round string laces. I think it works. They feel good to the touch. But they don't feel as as thin as you know when I reviewed the first passes ones. Very good. Very good. Now to these bad boys. So I I would always recommend you you know for the price especially to get some uh, lasted shoe trees. And these as you can see are also lasted to fit the shoe perfectly uh, on the U last. It's quite, you know, simplistic, but works really well. Uh, it is quite... Ugh, it's quite difficult to just get in for the first times and then pull out. And it's quite heavy as well. It does have just uh, one wooden rod in the middle that it is a bit of a handful in the beginning. But overall, nice. This uh, should not be your first choice, probably. If uh, you are traveling, they're going to be quite heavy. But they do the job really well, and I always recommend for like high-end shoes. And that's about it, or at least what I can think of. I think this is a great shoe, and I really hope you enjoyed the close-up. Which means that it's time to move on to more interesting stuff. So that was the close-up, and I hope you enjoyed it, because these are really beautiful shoes. I mean, you saw from the close-up how nice the shape is, and if you consider the, the price that they usually go for, it's quite mind-blowing when you think that this is an actually handmade shoe. Like, genuinely handmade. I, it's hand-welted, hand-lasted, and even the soles, which is very rare, are hand sewn. So, first of all, I'd like to discuss sizing which is very, very important. Uh, Vash has quite a lot of different lasts and quite a lot of famous ones. They have the F, P, P2, uh, the U1, which is this, and the K, which I think is a bit of a wider version of this, of the U. And I discussed sizing before I order because it's a made to order. Uh, I really like soft square lasts, so this was my first choice. Uh, there are quite a few people that say that you should size up half uh, compared to your usual UK in, in the U last. And I would almost tend to say yes. So when I wear this in my regular UK 8, uh, which is my most standard, I would say, uh, sizing, and I have a medium towards wide foot, um, it fits okay. Uh, here at the instep, it's nice. It's quite good actually. Uh, it is very little pressure, but you know it's gonna give in a little bit. Uh, there is no heel slip. It's quite great at the back. 
the support is, was actually pretty good. The only, you could say, issue that I have is that at the edge, you know, here behind, next to the small toes, I did get, not, not exactly folding, but I did get a little bit more pressure in the beginning. Uh, you could think about when I was doing the passes review and my foot was, it was too narrow and my foot was folding underneath. This is not exactly the case, uh, but it will require a little bit of breaking uh, so far from the couple of hours that I've tried them on. I would say that if you're the person that in more chiseled soft square lasts gets their toes pinched around here and on this area, then I would maybe recommend you take a size up, like half a size up, okay? Uh, of course, uh, I would always recommend just reaching out to Vash and asking for some sizing advice. What I did was I gave them my usual sizes in many different brands and they recommended this one. And for the most part, it's correct. So uh, they, they will definitely get some use. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Uh, so now that we discussed sizing, which was quite straightforward, thankfully, I said my first pair, what should we talk about? Uh, we should talk about the overall build quality. Overall, it feels like a very substantial shoe to hold and not exactly heavy, but it does feel robust. I, the leather is it's quite supple and they came with a really nice shine out of the box actually. Uh, only time will tell how the leather will age and the shoe will age, but you know, based from the experiences that I have so far, I think it will be wonderful. Another thing that surprised me a lot was that this is supposed to be a dark brown museum calf, which was my first, but it's really subtle. I don't really see anything. Uh, you could argue that you could see that, you know, when there's direct sunlight or if you really, really look very close. But for me, museum calf is nothing or was nothing special at least so far. Maybe it's different if you go for a more, uh, you know, bold color, such as the gold museum, which they are famous for. But this, for me, this is perfect. It does remind me in some areas, you know, where there's a bit of a color difference and a bit of more lighter shades that you can notice. And it reminds me of a patina, and I love that very much. As far as the shape, the color, the leather, the design elements, I think this is a very well proportioned shoe. Even though they make some models that are not really my, uh, how would you say it, my taste. I think this is great. It looks perfect and I really look forward to wearing it even more. And that's about, you know, the actual shoe. Then you have to discuss pricing and value, which is different for many people. If you're looking for a handmade shoe or a shoe with many more, you know, much more handmade details, then this is probably the value king. And please don't talk to me about Merrimin. Don't. Because generally, this is a handmade shoe for radical prices. If you think about it, especially right now that I'm recording this video, they have sales up to 55%. So if you can get your size for, what is it, 280 euros, it's, it's, it's a smashing price. Definitely go and try them on. Absolutely, get one. Uh, even for full price, which can be 500 to 550 euros, which is, I would say, 600 plus, uh, USD and possibly a little more for this because it's a made to order. When it comes to made to order, you are very flexible, so you can change, you know, last, you can change colors, different combinations, different leathers, change the sole. It's quite flexible and still great value for money. If you think about it, the closest one to that level would be, let's say, Passus, which was 800 to 900 euros. And it is a more polished shoe in some areas. But for the people that look for genuine value and get a great shoe, I think this is very hard to beat, right? Availability has been always been a topic of debate or like a bit more difficult because Vosh didn't have a great website, but they overhauled it last year and it's much more usable now. So the, the main channel, I would say, at this point in time would be to go through them. And you can find as well the sample sales there and all the contact details that you will need for a potential made-to-order. 
and it includes even exotic leathers such as shell cordovan, bimaterials, uh, crocodile, etc. Now when it comes to availability uh, through other channels, there are not so many retailers left or those that are left, you know, you have to beat work for it and look for them. I will leave a few that I know and trust down in the description. So I would say, you know, the main channel would be to go through Vush directly, especially if you're doing a mint to order. And that's about it. Honestly, uh, I mean, I'm not surprised because I expected this to be very good shoes, especially for the price. But uh, it always surprises me when I get something, you know, I, I hold something and I, I have the opportunity to examine it closer and also try to take the review to the next level. Like, what did I miss last time? What can I improve on this one? Overall, the shoe is very good, well built. It has a very competitive price and futures. Um, it's much more accessible right now when it comes to, you know, uh, who to talk to, who to reach out to and where to find it. And the made order especially was very quick, you know, it was a very quick turnaround. There is a, there is a small problem sometimes where they don't have the best communication with clients or maybe retailers, uh, but you do have to take, you know, into account, first of all, that we're in the middle of the pandemic and that they are a very small team and very few people doing a lot of things that I can understand because I have my own business and I do everything myself. So have some patience with them. Reach out again if you really want a shoe like this. And I think you will be rewarded and you will be extremely happy with Vash Budapest. Uh, great shoes, can definitely recommend. Very happy to have these in my collection. And especially with the Austerity Baroque design, which is one of my favorites. And that concludes my review for today. I really hope you liked it. Uh, very excited. I have some amazing shoes to show you in the near future. So stay tuned for that. And if you love the video, even if you're new or not, remember to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, because there's got to be some great content coming up. And before we leave, uh, I want to tell you, you know, just stay for 30 more seconds because I've got some really bad dad joke for you. So I wasn't really gonna get a brain transplant, but then again, I changed my mind rather quickly. <laughs> oh, it hurts. It was so bad, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed it as well as the whole show and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.